happy Wednesday. Don't mind me. I just had some bran flakes and I feel like they're stuck in my teeth. They probably are. I apologize. This is Everyday Mary. I'm not going to floss again. I already flossed one time this morning. It's just me. Just plain on me. Y'all see me y'all see me without makeup all the time. I got no makeup on. My hair is over here somewhere. I just wanted to get it off my neck. Well, it's the day before Thanksgiving, and my dumb ass is going to the grocery store because I have no sense. I should have gone yesterday. I thought about it, but I ended up not doing it. Because I thought, you know, if you wait until tomorrow, those stores are going to be insane because most stores around here are going to be closed on Thanksgiving, which is wonderful. I think they should all close. They should all be, there's no reason. Let everybody go home and, and enjoy the day however they want to. They don't need to be coming into work. Um, if they, if they are open, I think there are a couple of grocery stores that are going to be open until like 1 o'clock or, you know, 2 o'clock in the afternoon and then they close. I guess it's better than nothing, but shit. You know, plan ahead, people. You know Thanksgiving's coming. You can see it on the calendar starting January 1st. Plan your shit ahead of time so these stores can close and you won't bitch about not being able to go get your damn cranberry sauce in a can. Stupid. I can't stand people that don't plan ahead. Plan ahead. You know what? If you have a chaotic life, if you feel like you just can't ever get anywhere and, you know, it's just awful, start learning how to plan ahead. So many people do not understand that basic concept. Plan ahead. It, you know, it's a little bit of trouble up front, but it saves you so many problems later. It will make your life more peaceful. It will make you less stressed. It will reduce your stress. It will reduce your anxiety. Or it does for me. I mean, it probably will for you too. Plan ahead and get things done ahead of time. And if you start doing that, you will get in the habit of doing it. And it's a habit, just like anything else. Train tracks. <laughs> I think they've smoothed them out a little bit. Okay. Yeah, plan ahead. I know so many people, they are, their lives are just chronic, they're chronically chaotic. Like they can't ever seem to get anywhere on time. They can't get anything done on time. And they're always frazzled all the time. Yeah, you need to take a good hard look at how you do things. You do not have to live that way. You don't, I can't stand living that way. I don't like being unprepared. Just, oh. I just saw the second dead kitty cat on this road since I got on it. God, all the little kitties, it makes me sad. Think about a poor little animal. Damn, this depresses me. That's the second one back there. So I, I didn't mean to go on a rant about planning ahead, but yes, planning ahead will make your life a lot easier. It really will. It will reduce your stress. It will, it will make your life more calm if you plan ahead and get things done early. And one thing you can do that I, I have found to be very helpful, get up 10 minutes earlier in the morning. It's just 10 minutes. You're not going to miss that sleep. Get up 10 minutes earlier and you won't believe how much less hectic your morning is. Just 10 minutes makes a huge difference. Or it does for me. Try it. Just try it. For real. It's really something. So I am headed to the small mart. I'm going to a Walmart neighborhood market. I'm out of uh, 12 ounce Pepsi cans. I get them in a 12 pack and I haven't been able to find them anywhere. Um, so I'm hoping, hoping I'll be able to find them at the small mart. So I need Pepsi cans. Um, I need a little hook. I wanna get some of those little 3M no damage hooks. I have a little thing I wanna hang up and I, I think I'm out of hooks. So I'm gonna go get some little hooks. Um, and anything else I find that looks good, keeping in mind the stores are not going to be open tomorrow. Well, I mean, some of them will be, but I don't want to go in there. The ones that are open will be really busy with people running in there for last minute stuff. But I'm not cooking anything for Thanksgiving, like I said. You know, my family doesn't do anything for Thanksgiving. Like, nobody does. My dad doesn't. My mom hasn't done anything for Thanksgiving since my kids were tiny. 
and even back then we would just go out to eat when uh when my younger son was very small we would go out to eat but we didn't cook anything it just wasn't worth the trouble because the kids didn't really eat much they didn't want you know turkey and stuff and so we would just go out to eat and uh golden corral you can turn your nose up at it if you want to but they actually do a pretty decent thanksgiving uh buffet on thanksgiving day they really do and it's actually pretty good so turn your nose up at it if you want to i don't care i love people who get snooty about food i'm thinking you know when the world collapses you're gonna eat some tuna out of a can you do know that right you're not gonna be able to be so sedity about what you eat you do realize that you gonna struggle it's gonna be a culture shock for you have fun with that but no i grew up eating inexpensive stuff because we didn't have a lot of money we couldn't afford gourmet this and free range that we ate whatever you know was cheap <laughs> so one in one way i was lucky though because we had an abattoir not too far from where i grew up and the guy was friends with my dad and like a butcher you know and he would uh my dad was a gunsmith and he would do work the the, the abattoir the butcher guy like to hunt and he had a lot of hunting rifles and my dad would do work for him on those on those rifles or anything else and in exchange for that he would give us like um cuts of meat like hamburger or sausage he made really good sausage his sausage i think was the best i've ever had and uh, he had his own cows and stuff and he would butcher those and sell them you know and and there i guess they were like grass-fed you know high dollar stuff but you know that's just something he did and he would give us my dad you know cube steak and every now and then like a t-bone steak or something and in exchange for the work that my dad did so it was really great i always look forward to him bringing home he would bring home just like a big cardboard box full of these little white packages there's a store it's called tote boys bin store what is that I kind of want to go check it out. Sorry, I, that was that used to be a pawn shop back there, but now it's Tote Boy's Bin Store. Why does that sound British? It's like, I don't know. Every time I hear the word bin, it makes me think of, of English people, because y'all like that word. Just bin it. Put it in the bin. B-I-N. Bin. Bin. It doesn't have two syllables, except when I say it. I can't help it. I'm sorry. Bin. Ben, Ben, never mind. You know what I'm trying to say. So yeah, I always look forward to my dad coming back from there with like a big cardboard box full of these, you know, it's packaged meat. You know, he'd wrap it in this white paper stuff, you know, like you wrap, I don't know what you call it, like craft paper. And my mom would make room in the freezer for everything. And man, it was so good. That sausage, oh, his sausage, he, the sausage he made was so good. Oh, it was delicious. I miss it. So, so we did get to have, you know, good meat occasionally. It was really good. The only problem, though, with meat was my mom was terrified of, you know, germs, bacteria in meat. She was really afraid that the meat was going to have worms in it or something. So she would just cook it to death. Everything was super duper well done to the point where it was almost burnt. Yeah. Uh, growing up, I thought all pork chops tasted like shoe leather because she would just cook them. She would cook them until they were like a misshapen hockey puck and they were just so dry. It was like beef jerky and I didn't like them. They had no flavor. They were dried out. Just I thought pork chops were gross. I didn't know there was any other way to cook them. And bacon, she would cook bacon until it was almost burnt. I mean, it was almost like black. I, mean, I don't like bacon like that. Crispy bacon is fine, but you know, don't, why didn't I park right there? Don't burn it, you know, don't, don't do that. I don't wanna park, I hate this parking lot. Every parking space here is shitty for some reason. <clears throat> yeah, it's crowded. Well, it's a little bit crowded here. It's actually not, it's not too bad. It's a smidge more crowded than normal. Oh, actually, I'm going to get a nice spot right here. Almost in the front. Almost at the front. I'm feeling special. 
food snobs. I can't stand food snob snobs. You know, just go just go on with that. Just shut up. And I, I'm at the point now. You know, as you get older, that's a Yukon just backed into my spot. As you get older, you will find that your tolerance for stupid things just drops to almost nothing to the point where it is getting harder and harder for me not to just say so. You know, when people want to prattle on about how, you know, I, I, I would only eat this this way. There is no other way. You know, I would not even tolerate it like that. Like, shut up. Just shut up. Eat the damn food and shut up. I, I'm so tired of people. And apparently people can even be snooty about eggnog. I did not know that until yesterday. Oh, well, no wonder you didn't like it. Did you see how disgusting the ingredients were? That's not even eggnog. That's just gross. That's nasty. That's why you didn't like it. You actually do like it. You just don't know any better because you bought shitty eggnog. Well, excuse the hell out of me. I was in Walmart and that was the only damn eggnog they had. And I'm not going to go traipsing around Greensboro looking for, what, art artisanal eggnog? Signature gourmet shit? It's eggnog. It's nasty. I don't care what you put in it. You could line it with gold and it would be shit. No, I didn't like it. And I really don't like it now that people told me I bought inferior eggnog. What the hell kind of world do you live in that that is the biggest thing you got to bitch about? I must not be doing too much worse because I'm bitching about you bitching about it. I hear the irony in that. But, no, I... Mm -hmm. It's like whenever I talk about coffee and fish. I don't like coffee. There's nothing about coffee that appeals to me except the smell of fresh roasted coffee beans. I do not like the taste of coffee at all. I never have. I tried to like it when I was younger, and one day I just finally had to accept the fact I don't like coffee. I don't, I don't like the way coffee tastes. The basic essence of coffee does not taste good to me. I don't like coffee-flavored stuff. I don't, I don't care how fancy it is. I don't care if it was brewed by the Lord Jesus himself. I don't want it. It does not taste good to me. But whenever I say that to some people, that is not acceptable. Oh, no, you've just never had any good coffee. Well, thank you for the 500 assumptions you just made. No, I have had coffee every which way. I've had your fancy-ass coffee. I've had cheap coffee. And whatever else you want to offer me, it all tastes like ass, and I don't like it. In fact, to me, the fancy coffee tastes worse somehow because the flavor is stronger. It tastes like ass. I don't like it, and I'm sorry. I did read somewhere there is a genetic component to the way you taste things and that some people taste things. Um, what was it I was saying? Oh, vegetables. Some people, to some people, a lot of vegetables are very bitter, and that's the way they are to me. To me, a, l a lot of vegetables have a very bitter taste to me, and I don't like them. It's very strong. And yeah, I read somewhere that that's a, like a, there's a genetic thing to that, that some people taste it as very bitter and some people don't. A lot of vegetables I really don't like because they just, they're so bitter. Just, bleh. I don't like them. And to me, coffee is just, it's not just the bitterness of coffee, because I know there are some coffees that are not as bitter, blah, blah, blah. I know that. No, to me, they are all very bitter. And the, the you know, that immediate kind of little aftertaste you get when you, like, swallow the coffee. Ugh. Oh, it's, oh, it's god-awful. I can't do it. I can't do it. I don't like coffee. I also don't like fish. I don't like the texture of fish. I don't like the way it smells. I don't like the way it looks. I don't like the way it tastes. There is nothing appealing to me about it. Now, I'll catch fish for you all day long. I love to go fishing. And I haven't been in a long time, and I would really love to go. I just haven't done it. I meant to go this summer. I never went even one time. I love to fish. I'll catch you fish all day long, and you can have them. I don't want them. I can clean a fish. I can cook it for you. But I don't want to eat it. I want to. Oh, you just never had any good fish. You don't know any better. You just need to have some. You need to have fish the way I make it. I don't want it the way you make it. No offense. It all tastes terrible. It stinks. I don't like the way it feels in my mouth. I don't like anything about it. I don't like the way it looks. I don't want to. Ugh, I want nothing to do with it. I don't like seafood either. 
Oh my God, it's more for you. That's why I tell people, it's more for you. You can have my share. I, I don't want it, I don't like it. But you're not allowed to not like some things. The, and people will literally tell you that you don't know what you like and what you don't. Oh, you've just never had any good fish. You've never had any good coffee. Well, sure I have. It all tastes like shit. Because people like you say, I need to try good coffee. So I try their good coffee, and it tastes like ass just like the rest of it. <clears throat> so I hate to tell you this, but even your good coffee tastes like ass. I want nothing to do with it. More for you. You can have my share. Don't like fish. Don't like seafood. Want nothing to do with it. Now, chicken and red meat I'll eat all day long. Pork all day long. Love it. Pigs taste good. Cows taste good. Chickens taste good. Yummy. See, my younger son and I went to the steakhouse the other night. It's the first time I've been to a steakhouse in years. Literally. I mean, I... I but my son, my younger son wanted steak, which I'm... Hell yeah, that poor boy doesn't eat much. He eats like a bird. And when he said he wanted to go have some steak, I said, let's go. So the other night, two nights ago, we went and had steak. Oh, it was so good. It was so good. And he loved it. He ate his all up. And that boy, he never eats. eats nah, he doesn't eat like that. He ate the whole. It wasn't big. It was like a petite sirloin kind of thing. He ate the whole thing. And he loved it. Yeah, I love steak. Whew. And I had leftovers, so the next day I got to have steak for lunch as well. So it was really great. Um, yeah, cows are yummy. I, I love cows. It's really good. Hey, Grandma. Shit, that lady's got spider webs on her car. You got spider webs on your little car. Little Ford Focus. You don't drive much, do you? She does. She got bona fide spider webs on her car. My, my son, so yeah, anyway, apparently you can buy inferior eggnog and, you know, it's awful. Well, you should have gotten some real eggnog. You should have gotten some good eggnog. Well, I'm, you know, a thousand pardons. But at the Walmart the other day, all they had was shitty eggnog. <laughs> I should look at, I, I saw they did have eggnog at um Aldi. I'm going to check the ingredients on it when I go. I kind of want to make that uh, bread again with, like, good eggnog. Would Aldi eggnog be good or is it not good because it's Aldi? Where do you go get fancy eggnog? I need to ask these people. Where is your Where is your eggnog proprietor? Beg, please tell me. I would love to know. I will frequent their establishment and make a purchase. Where do you go get your fancy ass eggnog? Do you pull it out of Santa's ass? I mean, where do you get this shit? Do you, sh you well, clearly you shop at nicer stores than I do. Good for you. It, it, you can't win for losing. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. You want to try to do something. Somebody's going to criticize what you do. They're going to criticize your ingredients. They're going to criticize the order in which you combine them. They're going to criticize what you stir shit with. They're going to criticize how you pour stuff into a bowl. They'll find anything to criticize. They'll criticize your measuring cups, which is why I never measure anything in the videos anymore because people literally criticize the way I measured things. Yeah, I do it wrong. I don't know how, but somehow I measure things wrong. So I don't, I don't ever measure anything in videos anymore. I just show it to you in another little nondescript container. I don't show me measuring it out because people criticized it and it happened numerous times. Like, oh, I just won't measure it out for you anymore. I'll just do that on my own. You know, you can just see me dump it in the bowl and you can just criticize how I put it in the bowl because I know you will. Although that pinned comment, the pinned comment about going to Top Chef Casting has reduced the stupid comments to almost none and that's why I do FAQs in some videos it reduces those comments down to almost none it reduces them by 95% easily and it's wonderful and I'm going to continue doing it because it causes people to zip it like well if I say anything she's just going to criticize me you damn right I am because you're being petty and stupid I don't nobody needs to hear about your expertise in pouring shit into a bowl Nobody needs to hear it. Nobody wants to hear it. Piss off. I'm not snarly all the time, but every time I make a video like that, I enjoy doing it, but I kind of wince at the same time because, like, what are people going to criticize about this one? Oh, the eggnog. Okay, yay. Didn't see that one coming. I didn't realize that, you know, you could buy the wrong eggnog. No, I'll keep that in mind, I reckon. 
anyway, it the bread was really good. The bread was fantastic. I ate what? Ugh. I ate too much of it last night, and then I had to go to this class. Oh God, I, I ate quite a bit of that bread because it was so good. I just kept nibbling on it. And then I, I felt kind of full. It weighs heavy on your stomach. I'll say that. It's very heavy on your stomach. And I had to go to this aerobics class last night. I thought I was going to freaking die. Like, why did I eat all that bread? Ugh. I feel like I was going to be sick. Like, don't ever do that again. Don't eat that before coming to a class like this. It's really stupid. It reminds me of this one time. This was two summers ago. I still remember it. And it was really hot. It was like mid-July. And it was super hot, super humid outside. And we were doing these outdoor exercise classes. Because this was the summer of 2020. And all the gyms were closed. And I was going... I don't really... I still do the outdoor classes, but not as much as I used to. They've kind of fizzled out since all the gyms are back open. But every now and then, I go... I, one will meet up and I'll go. Anyway. So... The, the class was going to be at 5.30 in the afternoon. So I thought, so it was like, it was a, it was a, it was a weekend. I remember that because my kids were home. No. Maybe it wasn't, well, it was summer, so they were out of school. Anyway, it doesn't matter. My older son had, had this big thing of salsa sitting out on the counter, and he was sitting there eating it with chips, you know. And I said, oh, that looks good because I was kind of hungry. And I tried, it was this new salsa that we hadn't tried before. And I tried it, and you know, oh, it was, it was so good. And I ended up eating a whole bunch of it without thinking, you know, Mary, you have to go to this class in like a half hour. Maybe don't, maybe don't eat a whole lot of that, you know. But I, I did. I ate a lot of chips and salsa because it was so good. So then I get to this class. And even at 530 in the evening, it was still like 85 degrees outside. And it was super, super humid. It was just sticky and hot. And it was a very intense workout. I remember it had a lot of burpees in it where you are inverted a lot. We did a lot of, of stuff where we were kind of just inverted. And I, oh, that salsa kept trying to come up just like it was burning my throat. And I, I was hot and we're bouncing around. And I thought I'm either going to throw up or die or I'm going to throw up and then die. Or I'm going to die and throw up. Something is going to happen. I am not going to survive this class. And it was an hour of that. And it was so damn hot. We were in the shade, but it, didn't, it did not do any good. I mean, it was just so hot. And I thought I was going to die. And I kept saying, never again, never again. Don't ever touch anything like that before class. Oh, it's so awful. I felt so sick. Oh, God, I felt so bad. Ugh. But I got through it. I, I got through it and I didn't throw up and I didn't die so that was good but yeah no I'm very careful now to try not to eat a whole lot of stuff before a class like that but yesterday I was not thinking about it and I, I just kept I just kept nibbling on that bread because it was so good it's it is really good I'm telling you and it's so easy to make and it, it's really really good and it smells wonderful it makes your whole house smell good mm mm mm, -mm. So, uh, my son, my older son pranked me this morning. I didn't appreciate it at all. So he was asking me, you know, what do you want for Christmas? I said, I don't know. I, I really don't know. But I was in Walmart the other day, <clears throat> the big Walmart, and I was wandering around in the back of the store. I think I went back there to get cat food or something. And, and they had this big display, like in the man in the middle of the floor, especially this time of year, they have out these cardboard displays of socks, underwear, t-shirts, sweatpants, stuff like that. Well, they had this big display of Reebok sweatshirts and they had them in all these different colors. It was a huge display and all the way around it, they had all these different color, just not hoodies, but just like plain sweatshirts. And they had this one that was dark green, and I really liked it. And I'm looking at it like, this is this is a nice shirt. I really like it. And I'm thinking, Mary, you just got rid of like 400 damn hoodies. You don't need any more shirts like this. You don't. I know, but it's dark green, and it's so pretty, and I don't have one that color. I don't have a dark green hoodie or sweatshirt. I think I need it. They were like 20 bucks. I said, I... Hey, you know, but then I thought, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll tell my son that I want this for Christmas. 
because it's, it's a $20 thing. You know, I was, I was looking for something in the $20 range to tell them to get me for Christmas. I'll tell them I want this, this sweatshirt for Christmas. And I think they're men's sweatshirts. So they had like medium to 2XL. I said, a medium would do. It would be a little big, but uh, you know, it's fine. <clears throat> they're very soft. They have, they're nice and thick and soft. Oh, and it, the color is really pretty. It's like this dark green. They had another one that was like beige that I really liked as well, but, and I'm still thinking about it, honestly, because <laughs> I really liked it. But again, I don't need it. But I thought, but if he wants to get it for me for Christmas, well, that's okay. I need, I, I don't know of anything to tell him to get me anyway. So I was telling him, I got home, I said, hey, I know what I want for Christmas. I want this hoodie at Walmart. <coughs> Sorry. He said, well, can you send me a picture of it? So I said, well, I mean, I'm not in the store anymore. I can't take a picture of it. Let me go on to the app, which is stupid. Don't go on the Walmart app looking for anything because you won't find it. So I went on the app, and according to the app, this, this sweatshirt does not exist. Not only does it, is it not available at Walmart, it literally doesn't exist. Because I couldn't find it anywhere on their website. Anywhere. And I did the in-store thing. No, they don't have it in the store either. No. I looked right at it, picked one up, and they don't have that. I just went out on Google and tried to find it. Couldn't find it there either. So, I said, well, I can't find a picture of it, but look, it's dark green. It has like Reebok just written across here, and it's not a hoodie. It's a sweatshirt, and it's on this big display. You go to the back of the store where you have like craft supplies at the very back, and then the pet food. It's kind of right in between craft supplies and pet food, right where the fabric is. There's this huge display. All you got to do is go back there and look, and they have them in all these colors all the way around, but I want the dark green one in a medium. He said, I don't know if I'll be able to find that. And one thing I do that irritates my kids, I will tell them the same thing over and over again just because it irritates them. So later that evening, I said, did, you, did, I, did I tell you what I want for Christmas? I want this hoodie. And I start to explain it. And he's like, no, stop. You already told me all that. Well, I to make sure you don't forget. <clears throat> so this morning... My son goes, should I just go to Walmart and get that hoodie? I said, you're not supposed to just tell me that you're going to get it. I mean, you're supposed to get it, but you're not supposed to tell me you're going to go get it. Should I just go get it? I was just going to give it to you. I said, but I won't have anything to open on Christmas Day. You, I will have no gifts from you under the tree. You're supposed to get it, bring it home, and at least stick it in a gift bag or something. You know, he said, I was just going to give it to you. See, that way, though, it makes more sense because you get to enjoy it longer in the cool weather. See, it's more practical for me to give it to you now instead of waiting a whole month to give it to you. You will have missed out on a whole month of enjoying, you know, wearing the sweatshirt. I said, fine, fine. Yeah, I guess go now and, you know, cool. I don't want you to wait too much longer because, you know, they might run out. So he goes to Walmart and he texts me when he gets there and he goes, I can't find the sweatshirt. I said, what do you mean? I told you exactly where to go. He said, yeah, I'm back here, but uh, I don't see it. And that that is one thing that my kids, they, and I fully believed him. I didn't think he was joking because my kids can look right at something and not see it. Now there can be, there can be a tiny matchbox car 500 yards away. They will not only see it, they will describe it to you, tell you what year it was made, make and model, and what's special about it. But if it's a bottle of ketchup two feet in front of their face, they can't see it. Mom, we're out of ketchup. It's right there. Oh, they can't see shit right in front of their face. So I totally believed he was being serious. Like, he literally, I guarantee you he's standing right in front of those damn sweatshirts bet you he is. I said, now it's not hanging up. It's not on a rack. It's on like this cardboard little freestanding display in the middle of that big wide aisle back there. He said, yeah, I walked all around. I don't see it. I said, do I need to come up there? He said, no, I'll keep looking. I'm like Stevie Wonder could see this display. It's about the size of a school bus. So finally he texts me again. He said, well, I found the display. I said, well, thank God. Yeah, um, I found the display, but they're all out of the green ones. I've gone all around this thing, and they have all these other colors, but no green ones. I said, are you serious? He said, yeah, they don't have any. Is there another color you would want? I said, no, I wanted the green one. 
And I was prepared. I was putting on my shoes as soon as he said they were out because then I felt this sense of urgency for some reason. Like, I, oh, I have to have this shirt now. They're out. Should I? I have to have one now. It's, it's a human nature thing. The, the sense of, you know, limit, a limited supply of something makes people more eager to obtain it. It's like an evolutionary thing. And sales, sales people will take advantage of that. They'll make you think, oh, it's almost out, or the time's almost up, the sale's almost over, to create a sense of urgency. It, it, it triggers like your little lizard brain back there. Ooh, obtain resources, you know, that's, you know, we have to, it's, it's an evolutionary thing. Um, I said, I gotta have it, I gotta have this shirt. What do you, are, they're out, really? I said, do they, are you saying they're just out of mediums, or they're out completely? He said, they don't have any. Like, the, there's an empty spot. I'm assuming that's where they were. I said, there's no way. And then I'm starting to imagine, like, you know what probably happened? Some new cult leader is looking for a uniform for, for the members of the group and went in there and thought, these green shirts are perfect. I'm taking all of them for my members. And somebody went in there and just bought all of them at once. And I'm a shitbag now because I should have bought it when I first saw it. Damn it. So I was literally about, I was putting my shoes on. I said, well, I'm going, I'm going to the Taj Mahal Mart because I bet they got them. And he, and he said, mom, mom, no, stop. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I got your shirt. I said, that was just mean. Why do you do that? Why do you, I already got one shoe on. I, I put my brand flakes down. Why, why would you interrupt me like that and get me all upset? He said, because it's funny. <laughs> you get all torqued up over stuff. <laughs> I do not. You do. You get mad about things that just don't make any sense. <laughs> I said, shut up. So, he, he, he returned home victorious. I got my sweatshirt. I'm very happy. But now I'm kind of wanting that beige one. <laughs> I'm sitting here like, you know that beige one was nice. And I'm like, Mary, shut up. You, no. No, you don't need any more damn sweatshirts. Just stop it. You go, I finally got the little shelf up there, you know, nice and orderly and it's not crammed full of stuff. Like, no, forget that beige shirt. You're not going to get it. So I will get to enjoy my dark green sweatshirt now and I'm very happy. So uh, I'm going to go in here to this small mart and I'm going to look for my Pepsis and anything else that looks good. And then I have to go to Aldi because I need some more cereal and some of the little salads. If they have the little individual salads, I want to go get some of those. Um, and then I'm going to go home. I checked I, I checked my work, and we didn't really have anything. I had a couple of things to do. Um, not much. Not much going on work-wise. The rest of the week's probably going to be pretty quiet. So um, there won't be anything from the patent office tomorrow or Thursday. I think they're closed tomorrow and... Or, sorry, they're closed tomorrow and Friday. So I won't be getting anything from the patent office. But our biggest client, like I've said, our the biggest... The main client that I work for is in Germany, so it's like a regular week for them, as far as I know. Um, and uh, they'll they might send us some stuff, but uh, other than that, I don't expect to have too much work to do for the next couple days, which is good because I really need to start going through all the presents for the Angel Tree kids. Um, I got several more packages. The mailman came by early this morning, brought me a big stack of packages. I got two of the kids' coats. And one of the pairs of shoes and a couple other things so almost everything I've ordered for them is here now I have some more stuff that's supposed to be delivered later today um, but it is really starting to pile up in my closet so I really need to just sort it all out like get four separate piles of stuff to kind of take stock of what I have for everybody and see if there's anything left that I want to get for anyone and uh, so then we can start doing show and tells. I will show you everything I got. Um, we're probably gonna have to split it up because there's so much stuff. And I'm not quite sure how to split it up. I might do one video showing you two kids stuff, do one whispered, one soft-spoken, and do a second video showing the other two kids stuff, and then do a video showing you the stocking stuff or things. I got pretty much all the same stuff to go in their stockings. So it's, you know, they're all kind of got, get, gonna get like the same stuff. These are all, these are four separate kids in four separate homes. So they're not gonna be comparing what they got to somebody else. So, you know, that takes a little pressure off. Like if I find a good deal on something and I think it's something they would, could use and would like, 
I could just get one for each of them, you know, so they don't have to, they're, they're not going to be comparing what they got to what the other kids got. So I'm going to tell you though, I, I, uh, oh, what was it? A couple days ago, I went back by the place where they have the angel tree and I, I oh my God, there were so many angels on that tree. I mean, it was just covered. There are, there are way more this year than there were last year. The whole tree is just covered in the little angel you know, each kid gets a little paper angel and the, their their number is written on the back of it. There are so many angels on this tree and, you know, they're running out of time to find people to take them and buy them something and they are just begging people to take more. It, it breaks my heart to see so many that have not been picked, that have not been taken. If I had the time and the money... Honey, I would take every one of those angels and I would I would give them a really nice Christmas morning. If I had the money and the time, I you know I would do it. It makes me so sad to see that there are still so many on that tree. And they're just asking anybody and everybody to please come take one and and you know buy a few things. I keep worrying she's going to hit my car. Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> Sorry. But it just, it made me so sad. It just broke my heart to see that there are still so many angels on this tree. Uh, I mean, they do something, I think, for all the kids. Even if they're not picked, they're going to give them something. But it's not going to be as good. You know it's not. They'll get, like, one thing, which is better than nothing. I, you know, I know, but... I just wish there was a way I could do more. I wish I wish I had the money and the time to take some more, but I, re I really don't. I can't, you know, I am very tempted to do, at least go get like one more. I am so tempted to go get at least one more. I've been thinking about it ever since I saw that a couple days ago. I am very tempted to at least go get one. It's it, it's killing me. It is just killing me to see and know that each one of those little angels is a little child that would really love to have some something nice for Christmas. And it just, oh, it just kills me. I, so I've been thinking about going over there and getting another one. I have, seriously. Whether I make a video with it or not, I don't care. I just, I, ah, I wish I could take them all. I swear there were probably 75 angels on that tree. Oh my God, there were so many. A lot of people are struggling this year. And, it, you know, it's only going to get worse. But a lot of people are already really struggling. And, you know, I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know. And I know what it's like to struggle financially. And you know Christmas is coming. And, you know, like... What am I going to do? Fortunately, my kids were small, so, you know, I could get them inexpensive little things, and they were just happy to have presents to open, and I didn't have a lot of money to spend on them, but I did the best I could. Um, so, I, I know what it's like to stress about it. I really, I know. It, it is not, it is not fun, and I, I always said if I ever get to a point financially where I can help someone else, I'm going to do it every chance I get. Because I know, I know what that feels like. And I grew up with a lot of bare bones Christmases myself. And, uh, yeah, I want to I wanna help anybody I can. So, uh, yeah, there may be a fifth angel. I don't know. I've been thinking about it. I, wanna, I, I really want to go get at least one more. And it will be very hard not to just go ahead and grab a whole bunch. But I... You know, they want everything turned in by December 10th. So, you know, buy stuff, wrap stuff, turn it in by the 10th. So, uh, I'm running out of time. But, anyway, I've been thinking about it. And <clears throat> I may end up doing it. But, um, yeah. Thank you so much for being here. I hope your Wednesday is good. If you have plans for Thanksgiving, I hope it's a wonderful one for you. Enjoy a lot of good food. I hope you get to see family members that don't drive you crazy. And uh, <laughs> and you have a wonderful time. I'll make a video tomorrow. Really, all I'm doing tomorrow is um, I'm probably going to go ahead and start getting Christmas stuff down out of the attic. Um, 
I'll probably watch the Charlie Brown Thanksgiving special. I have that on DVD. I have the whole set of the Charlie Brown holiday cartoons. I'll probably watch that and um, go start going through the Christmas, the, the angel tree presents and everything. So I don't have like big plans tomorrow. I'm not, we're not going anywhere or doing anything. We might go out to eat at some point. I don't know. That's kind of up in the air right now. We may do that. We may not. I don't know. But I hope you have good plans, and I hope you have good food coming up, and you're going to enjoy it. Enjoy it. Seriously, you know, one of these days, it's all going to be over. And all those elderly relatives <clears throat> that try to tell you stories and try to talk to you, and you don't really want to, put your phone down and talk to them. Because one of these days, they're not going to be here anymore. Or you may not be here anymore. Nobody, you're, We're not guaranteed any amount of time here. Um, you know, we never know how long we have, so give them a hug. Let them tell you their stories, even if you've heard them a hundred times. Let them tell you. Let them talk to you and, and, and tell them you love them and happy Thanksgiving and you're glad they're there. Because one of these days, it's going to be over and you won't have that opportunity anymore. So enjoy it while you can. And uh, if you're missing people this year, my heart goes out to you. I know um, several people that this will be the first Thanksgiving without somebody close to them. And, and I, I really feel for you. I do. I, I know that's hard. Um, but hang in there and try to enjoy it as best you can. Because that's what they would want you to do anyway. They wouldn't, they wouldn't want you sitting around crying or being sad. So try to enjoy it. And I hope today is wonderful for you. And, uh, and thank you for being here. Make sure I got my keys. Thank you for being here. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you again soon.